In a previous video, we talked about the building blocks that put the intelligence in AI. And in this video, we are going to set up a rag, so a retrieve augmented generation on top of our LLM. And we are going to then fine tune and create our own artificial intelligence, Tom Brady. For that, we need to collect the data. We need to format the data in a way that makes it easier to be vectorized. And we then need to hook everything up. Once that happens, we can then refactor it into turning into an AI agent. So then you can connect it to your chatbots and whatever else you want to do. So yes, not only one, but two systems to make to make ChatGPT obey and receive your context the way you need it to. And we're going to do all that right now. Yo, are you ready to write some Python? So the best way to actually collect this data that I found was using Python. And because it has this nice library called NFL DataPy, which grabs a bunch of different APIs that are free and puts their data together so we can fetch them. Then I'm using daytime module and the pandas. So the pandas is to actually create the output that I want, either in SSV or as a JSON, the library. And I'm using JSON because I found that the pandas JSON output is not particularly good. So I'm using the built-in module from the standard library to just tailor the JSON the way I really needed to. Going forward, the pendants, I set the option. It's going to be the new default, so we don't have any silent downcasting, and that's just to make the code more future compatible. It works both ways. So the first thing that I did is create this dictionary for the columns, where I get the columns that come from the library that I'm using, and I'm, tra I'm translating that into human readable text. That's going to be especially important for us to vectorize it later. And then we have a few methods that we create. So the first one in the root of my module, I'm checking if the file name that I'm running is main, I'm going to then call the main function. In the main function, I define it over here where I use this method to get years. So I say how many years back I want, and it's going to return me an array of all the years. For so let's common click in it and check how it goes. I'm using the datetime method to grab the year that it's the current year. And then I'm using a loop to get all the years back for it. So I'm just subtracting one for the year and then I get as many years back as I want. In this case, we're using five. And then I'll just print a nice log saying, yeah, I'm about to fetch the current season data and then we call the fetch pass data. And once everything happens and it's done, the files are saved, I will let my user know I, I prompted that it's done. So let's dig in to the fetch pass data. The fetch pass data is involved in try accept. Try catch still feels better to my ears, but anyway. And then we're going to print, yeah, I'm preparing the pass stats, uh, grabbing it up. And I'm saying, yeah, for all these years, so I'm going to print out the array of all the years that we're collecting. With that, the NFL library is going to give me this function that I can then pass the, the type of the statistics that I want. So it can be pass, it can be rush yards, it can be uh, interceptions. I'm going to use pass for this one and I'm passing the array of the years just like that. And then I'm going to put that into this data frame. Once the data comes back and I'm ready to go, we can start formatting this data. The first thing we're going to do is I want to rename the player ID to be the ID of this, uh, of my new data set. And I'm going to do that in place. So I'm going to mutate the current data frame that I have. And then I'm going to replace all the none values with false and convert everything to a string. Otherwise, it becomes difficult for my AstraDB to consume the data. I found out that if it's not string, it's going to fail silently every now and then. So I just feel it easier to just convert it to string. So also, it makes it easier to vectorize later. With this, I'm going to create a content column, which it, 
this is the most important column in our data set because uh, that's where I'm going to create the one that's going to be vectorized by Astra. So let's keep that for right now. And I'll grab all the data that I have. So all my columns, and I'm going to put that into a metadata column. Then I am going to assign a new content column that I just about to create with the content that I created, and we can create the JSON. So let's dig in to the content one. The content column is going to first exclude the ID, and we are going to then convert all the values into a list. With this, we're going to inter iterate with, within the list. So this is a Lambda row, which is basically, if you're a JavaScript developer, it's an arrow function. And we're going to join all the columns. And here I'm passing a template string. So here's the moment that I could improve this algorithm. Instead, I'm just grabbing the columns and saying, this human readable text is of this value. In my dictionary, instead of saying something like that, it could go like pass drops. Let's say number of passes this player has dropped. Yes, that would then create a better text to be vectorized. So once that is done, I create a dictionary out of this and I return it. So then we have one key value where the value is all data inside my table that is interpolated inside the same string. And the metadata, I'm going to grab everything except the content, which is going to make my table redundant and way bigger. So I'm excluding the content and I'm excluding the ID because the ID is going to be its own key anyway. And then I return this data. Finally, we can create the JSON. And to create the JSON, what I'm doing is first I create a file name. So I'm passing only the file name and I'm just appending the extension. And then I'm going to copy the data frame that I have and I'm going to translate it into a JSON. Once that is done, the JSON is created. And I found I need to go back into the JSON, open the file, and I need to wrap it in an array. Otherwise, it's going to just create one JSON for each row, it's going to create all of them in the same file and the file itself is not going to be a valid JSON. Thanks, Python. And so I iterate through it, I put it in an array and I create a new object for each one of them. I also format it properly and then I finally save the JSON. And with that, we're good to go. Let's then check how my code runs. So we're going to do Python and I'm going to pass the file that I wrote it. And then it's going to fetch the data for all these years, prepare everything, and then format and save. So with this, we can come over here. The file name that I passed was pass data. So I can see here pass data JSON. And there we go. We have over here Patrick Mahomes and the number of times he got sacked for the game with this ID. So this was a game in the season of 2024, and it was for the Kansas City Chiefs that played the Baltimore Ravens. So with this, we can then create the whole record of the entire season for passes and feed all this data into our very own AI system. So let's do that. So now jumping into my data stacks dashboard, I'm on AstraDB, and you can see here I have already done a few requests and I already have a few records. Whenever you log in to your dashboard, you come to databases and you create a new one. In this case, I'm going to the one I already created and in Data Explorer, you can set up a new collection. And here, whenever you're setting up a new collection, you can then choose the OpenAI embedding model and you might need to enable the plugin. I think they were, it was not by default to me check the model that you want. In this case, I'm using the small one. And then you can load the data. I decided to load on JSON. It also accepts um, unstructured data and CSV. In my experience, JSON is more reliable than the CSV one. And if I come to my JSON output, you can see that each record has been defined uh, with the metadata that I created and the vectorize which is the one that I selected to be turned into a vector, is my content one. 
what happens is whenever you come to the loading data, it's going to prompt you, it's going to ask you which one you want to vectorize and you pass the content, the one that you just formatted to be more easily consumable. With this out of the way, we can then jump into length flow. Now length flow is going to take a while to load. And here you have all your flows. And I'm going to use the reg first. On the navigation tab, you have like inputs, you have outputs, prompts, data, like a bunch of components. And these are what these things are called over here. And these components are what's going to then you use to generate your system. So let's take this one out of the way and we can come over here and go step by step. So the first thing is going to happen is our chat input. Wherever the, the text input is, it's then going to come over to our Astra database and it's going to receive a search input. And as you can see here, it's going to pick like whatever stats we want it to be. And we select the database. This one is comes like pre-filled and you can set up a bunch of environment variables for you. And then you select the Astra vectorize. Finally, the data is going to be parsed. So you can just drag the component over here and connect. And the input is where things start happening for us. The input, we can then use the template and pass. So then you can pass the context to instruct your AI, your model about who they are and what they need to be. Once this is done, we can then pass it to OpenAI, which we're going to connect it to our large language model. And then we're going to pass the input. You select the model that you want. And you pass your API token and you select the temperature. So how much you're willing, you're letting it hallucinate or not. For your agent, you can come over here and you can then customize like what's the name of the sender and how are they going to reply and so on. So with this, my sender name is going to be Tom Brady. And now I can jump over to the playground where I can start a new session and we can ask questions like, who are you? And we're going to get the response about, I am Tom Brady, widely regarded as the most successful quarterback in NFL history, blah, blah, blah. And that's awesome, but we actually passed some current data to it. So who is the best? passer in 2024 considering the stats that you have and so now what it's doing is using the data that I passed it the context is being augmented through the similarity search and the large language model is going to be able to have a better output for me and boom it's going to pass the data from the games that I provided it and and then it's going to then conclude that considering the overall performance and bad pass statistics, Kyler Murray appears to be the best for the provided stats on 2024. Awesome. If we want to go a little bit further on that, we can then create an AI agent, which is going to allow it to have better inference and have, and have a more engaging output. So let's go to our agent 12. So you're going to see that it's more or less similar to what we already have created with the rag, but now um, everything is going to centered around the agent. So what we're doing is we have a chat input, which is the question we're about to make, and then we wired it into the input of the agent. And the agent then has some instructions. And we're going to say, you are Tom Brady, former quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New England Patriots. You won multiple Super Bowls, blah, blah, blah. You are now retired and aspiring to become a reliable commentator for the NFL. So you use data provided to make possible predictions or draw opinions. And then we're going to pass a tool for it. And the tool is going to be our database. So we're going to pass a bunch of data to it, the data that we created, and we are going to then have an output. So back into our playground, we can do the same thing we did before. So let's go about who are you? And our agent is going to say, I'm Tom Brady, the former quarterback, blah, blah, blah. How can I assist you today? 
And you can see in the output that it didn't go through my data because I didn't ask any question that would need for that. Now let's see who is the best passer in the NFL according to your stats. And then you can see that based on the data from the past five seasons, and if I open it up, you're going to see that it actually queried my database. So you can see the NFL passes, you can even see the data that it used and so on. And so based on that, while I don't have the exact rankings at this moment, players like Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers and Josh Allen have consistently been at the top of these metrics in recent seasons. And that's it. That's how you create a chatbot to help you finding out who's the best NFL player. I think if we can add a little bit more data to it, it's going to be pretty nice and I don't know, maybe it can help you cheat on your fantasy league. I hope that has helped you understand a little bit better about how AI works and AI agents and so on. And let me know in the comments below what were the shortcomings or what are your comments and how you feel about that. Other than that, I hope I catch you on the next one. See you later.